Welcome back to Unqualified and Educated, where we give you our unqualified and educated opinion on all things sports, music, movies, whatever you find interesting, we're going to talk about it. On today's episode, Carl is not here today. We got Mike returning back to the show. Yay! What's, what's good, y'all? What's up, bro? Oh, you know, it's out here in Sacramento for the day. All right. We just literally came back from... Wait, Wait. hold on, hold on, hold on. Before that... Oh, I no. Gotta, I, oh, no. I got to give a shout out to a special listener out there. My good friend, Melissa, I want to thank you for listening. I said that wrong. Thank you for listening to the our podcast. Okay, look it out. Look, look at here. Melissa hates sports, right? And she's been listening to every single one of our episodes, even though she hates sports. And that's all we talk about. So you can't be mad. So I have to give a shout out. And I want to thank you for listening and giving us advice and critiquing. You're the best. All right. So shout, shout out. You got anybody you want to shout out? Um. Nah, I'm good. All right, so the shout out <laughs> the shout out segment is over. Let's get to it. So, how you doing, bro? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing good actually. You know, things things are looking up. This week was like a stressful weekend, and then I came into Monday. I feel good. Oh, you know, you, you, oh, you stress out? Oh, you know, work. Okay, okay. All yeah, those yeah, shenanigans. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. So, all right. So right now, we're actually in a parking garage. In my car. And Chance in, in Mike in Mike's car. Man. Because we parked in the parking garage. We just left the Kings game. Kings Heat. Man. You already know who won, baby. That was crazy. Kings, baby, all day. Kings came back in the fourth, which was crazy. Shout out to the Cardiac Kings. We we do this scores. But I do gotta give a shout out to the man, the legend, Dwayne Wade. Oh yeah. Last game. Last game that as a Heat you as as a as a Kings fan, this is the last game you'll see Dwayne Wade play in Sacramento, Arco Arena, Golden One Arena. This was the last game ever. So I want to give a shout out to Dwayne Wade. I had to I had to come out here. You and know? Mike, Mike came out and watched the watched the man play. He 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 delivered. Like don't he get, delivered. He hit some Ooh. real clutch threes in like the the third or second or third quarter. Mm-hmm. He really kept the Heat every time the Kings would come came back. Dwayne Wade hit those threes, so you know I gotta give a, I gotta give a couple shout outs to a couple people that a few people that left the team. You know, Scal, thanks for uh, thanks for everything you did for the franchise. You know, things didn't turn out right, but I hope you find success in the future. Benny Mac, I hope that you can find your way on a playoff team. Zach Randolph, I want to thank you for coming in and mentoring the young guys, and you even gave up all your playing time this year. To let them develop and grow and you just watch the good thing happen you never heard zach randolph complain whine or nothing he showed up to the games he was at the games he would he would he would cheer the guys on you would see you would see zach randolph coaching it zebo was coaching him so i want to give a shout out to zebo i appreciate i appreciate you thanks for teaching these young guys jay jack justin jackson man i was hoping that you was going to be with the team forever i was hoping you would retire in a Kings jersey. I was hoping, man. But wherever you go, Jay Jack, just keep on hitting them smooth threes from deep. Just keep on developing. You're going to be that D and three wing. You know, hopefully you can come back to Sacramento one day. And I want to give another shout out to the man, Iman Shumpert. Shump. Thank you. Purple talk all day. Purple, purple, purple talk. And by the way, if you guys didn't know, you guys need to go check out Iman Shumper's album. Shari Shump. I can't say the album name. I, I don't, I'm not. I'm not well versed in French, but the album is fire. Look, you guys need to go check out Shump's album. But Shump, I want to thank you for coming in, and it, and it it really started with Shump. Uh, like what he was doing on Instagram, he was really making you know the Sacramento. He was really riding for Sac, and he was really he that mentor. People always say this term all the time, veteran leadership, right? Yep. You would really see it with Shump, and you would really see it with Zebo, and and other guys like Zach, I mean uh, Vince Carter and Gary Temple from last year. But this year, you really saw Shump and Zach Randolph really coaching those guys. I really felt like Shump was the heart and soul of the team, and it really hurt to see him go. But man, Shump, I really want to thank you for putting in that, putting in work. You know, address. You know, he was involved with the culture of Sacramento, the culture of Sac- the Sacramento Kings. Just making it just cool to be on Instagram. You know, purple talk. 
You know what I mean? Scores. There's some of you Kings fans that didn't like the name Scores. Well, that's too bad. You know why? Because y'all ain't y'all ain't on the court with them. Those got those boys on the court balling. And if they won't call themselves the Scores, they the Scores. So uh, my bad, my bad, Mike. Yeah, I just had to get that out, get my shout outs. I hope all five of those Kings they all they go in and they go off and uh do 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 thing do big things. I hope Shump, you know, hit 17 threes in the playoffs. Oh no. I hope Benny Mac finds his way on the team. I hope Scow develops on the uh, on the Trailblazers, and I hope J Jack. I hope you continue to hit them threes. I know you're gonna find a lot of playing time in in uh, in Matt in Dallas, Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. You know, and Z Ball, Z Ball. I hope you find your way on a contender. Just join the Warriors to get a ring. So without further ado, shout shout outs are over. Anything you want to talk about today, bro? Man, I mean, it could be. They don't have to be sports or anything. It's honestly, like, since we're talking basketball, the trade deadline. Yeah, man. I mean, everybody's covered it, but yeah. now we got to talk about the top teams. Mm-hmm. You know, like we have arguably one of the best Sixers teams in recent history. Okay. We have possibly, in my opinion. A top five Bucks team Mm -hmm. in their you know team history, and then you have you know the Celtics, Mm -hmm. um, the Pacers, which are still doing good. Um, You know, we wish, of course, Vic the best of health and as soon as he can. He was playing great, but like, and then the Raptors, they just picked up Mark Gasol. Yep, traded little to nothing, lost Jonas Valanciunas, which is. Possibly a, a starting. He's a starting. You know, big. A starting big. Yeah. But where do we go from here? Okay. You know, we have LeBron saying that the East. Um, you know, basically he said, "What was that quote again? You remember?" No, I was. He said, it. "Just because I'm in the West, doesn't mean they ha- don't have to go through me." Like that says a lot, because the East now is, uh, is top heavy. What does that even mean, though? He said that just because they're in the, just because he's in the West. So he said he was basically implying that be, just because he's in the West Coast mm-hmm. doesn't mean anything. He's saying this is what I think. This he's saying that because he's in the West Coast, the teams on the East are saying we're good. We'll ride it to the finals and we'll win a championship. You know, if it's against the Warriors, it's against the Warriors. But mm-hmm. Braun is saying he's taking the Lakers to the finals and saying whoever is going up against me in the East, it doesn't matter. You know, that's honestly, I, when I heard that quote, I thought the same thing, but then I thought to myself, why would he say that if he's in the same conference as the Warriors? Okay. I get, I get what he, I get what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking that, I was thinking that uh, at the beginning of the season, Oh, DeMar DeRozan finally got rid of little LeBron James. If, he, if this was when Demar was still in the Raptors, I was thinking Demar finally got rid of LeBron James. But then I was thinking if he even made it to the finals, he was to have to play LeBron James. Mm-hmm. So it's like technically he still had he didn't get rid of him. But I just don't see, I don't understand what he's talking about. Like they're like they're not any they're not even in the playoffs right now. And I understand that he he was hurt 15 games his, his leg you know he groin he pulled it. But then it's like you don't even trust those your your teammates to get you to the finals. Because if you did, you wouldn't be trying to trade every single one of them right now or two days ago. Oh, here we go. So it's like LeBron, like, what? What is he even talking about? I don't. It, the East doesn't run through him. The, the 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 champion. Yeah, he's right. The East, the East, the East doesn't run through him. The NBA runs through the Warriors. Mm. The, the NBA runs through the Warriors. If you want to win the championship, you got to beat the Warriors. That's if and or that's there's no if ands or buts. That just is what it is. I mean, I get it, but imagine, imagine being, imagine the Lakers being eighth, mm-hmm. the Warriors being first. You know, of course, mm-hmm. you know, since everybody's struggling right now in the West. Well, not everybody, but you know, the teams that should be making it, um, the Rockets, the Jazz. All those guys are you in. Know, those guys are in, but like, you know, they're still struggling for you know whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. For you know. Even the Spurs are in there. The Clippers are still in there. Mm-hmm. But imagine if the Lakers versus 
the Warriors. What about that? They're yeah. not gonna. They can't beat the Warriors. I mean, they can't. Yeah, they can't beat the Warriors. He couldn't beat the Warriors with with Kyrie and Kevin Love. Mm. You think he can beat the Warriors with Lonzo and Brandon Ingram? I mean, it's possible. No, it's not. Possible. Honestly, I'm not saying that it. I'm not saying it's a for sure thing. I'm saying it's just possible yeah, because I, I used to. I used to give LeBron the benefit of the doubt. I used to say LeBron can at least get two games. That was before they got swept last year. Mm-hmm. That was before they got what what in five games a year before. Yeah, the, I don't I like LeBron. The, I I hate to say it, the LeBron dominance is. I think it's over. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's what thirty three, pushing yeah. thirty four. You can't. I can't blame him. But he's still arguably a top five player in the league. You can't go. You can't say anything about it because it's true. Even with his injury, I would still put him top ten with an injury. Yeah. He's you know? top, he's still a top five, but, but you got the top you got two top five players on the Warriors. You got Clay Thompson that's probably a top twenty five player. That's fair. You got Draymond Green that's probably a top thirty player. And that's a stretch, but okay. You got Demarcus Cousins when healthy, a top fifteen player. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. And so it's like And then of course not including K D and Steph, yeah. two of the best players in the world. Pretty much, so it's like I mean that that that's you know I, see, see my thing is with LeBron James, you play against the Warriors, Kevin Durant cancels out LeBron, they yeah. cancel each other out, and at that point it's, what is Lonzo going to do with Steph, what is Rondo going to do with Steph, what is KCP going to do with uh, Clay, Clay, what is Ingram going to do with Clay, what is they traded uh, Zubac for nothing really, yeah. So who's who's who they have? I mean, they got Mike Muscala, which is a solid, mm. you know, a solid bet, you know, shooting shooting big, scoring, you know, offensively, defensively is you know about the same. Yeah. At least you have a veteran to play. I think, I think if Lonzo could keep up his defense like how he has been before, you know, he got injured and how he's been playing, because, in my opinion, I don't. You could probably agree that he's a top five defending point guard right now. Being a guy that's still super young, as le- as athletic as he is, I can't name any other point guards after him that's not in the top five okay. def- I, defense. I, I, I see what you're saying. You know, like, like, I, I, he I, cancels I, out Steph shooting, which is... No, no, no. I never said, I never said by a lot. No, I never no. said by a little, but it helps no, but you when said you're it, a guy like that. You, you can't can, no, you can't cancel out somebody a lot or a little. If you cancel somebody out, you cancel them out. Fine. Okay. You. He makes it hard. He makes it harder. Yeah. Because Steph can shoot lights out. Yeah, but... Everybody in the world knows that. But I haven't seen anybody can stop Steph. So, like, and he makes it harder, but, okay. Like, so you said top five. So there's Patrick Beverly. Okay. There's Drew Holiday. Yeah. Um, there's Mike Conley. Uh, not this year. Mm. Uh, we really have to pull out these stats right now? Yeah, you're going to Oh, that. no. Let me pull this up. Players. I got you. 1.4 seals, 0.3 blocks a game. No, don't, don't, like... Oh, we're not, we're talking about advanced stats? Yeah, too? I'm looking at advanced stats. Oh, oh no, 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 okay, 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 okay. But no, no, like, and, and don't get me wrong, I know Lonzo's a defender. Like, mm-hmm. I, I respect, like, I I like Lonzo. I think Lonzo's going to be great. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. And I know his defense is great. I'm just thinking maybe not top five yet. You but don't think so? Not, I don't know. As For far as, point guards, at least this season? And like I said, like the if there's events metrics, I can see it. I can I I, I would agree. I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I just don't know. I no, just, I, I I can understand that. Yeah, I, I I just don't know. But I think what you're, you're asking Lonzo a lot to be a defensive stopper on Steph Curry. I mean, who else would you have? <laughs> there's they they don't. I mean, they can, and, but they don't even really play him though. Mm. He's not getting like 33 minutes a game. That's true. LeBron came. LeBron comes and he destroys all their development. Okay, Lonzo Ball. Uh, 105 as far as guards go. I mean, or point guards in this case. But he's 105? 105 defensive rating. <laughs> but he is our, he, like the flip what? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I personally think he's still on the perimeter. Here we go. 
That's crazy. You done? <laughs> I'm done. You done? You ain't done. <laughs> I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. Go on. No, you good. But no, like on the at least on the perimeter sake. Mm-hmm. I mean, inside is different. You know, like for a second year guard to come in and play inside and out, that's hard. No, it is. No, you I know? agree. But for a second year guard to be that good on defense, you know, he's struggling offensively, but defensively he's pretty solid. No, and like you I don't, like, yeah, like I said, I don't have a problem with Lonzo being mm-hmm. there. I just think it's too early. Just because they just they don't play him. Fair enough. When they when they when they, when he was playing before he got hurt, he was doing he was doing great. Mm-hmm. But you know, they he got hurt, and that's when they they really started. They got in trouble. But no, I I I, I don't have yeah. Like I said, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. And so, but like according to this, like if we look at defensive win shares, like the top mm-hmm. point guards defensively. Yeah. You start with Mike Conley, Corey Joseph. Where? Like right here. Defensive win shares. Oh, defensive win shares. I'm looking at defensive ratings. Yeah, I'm looking at, you know, their defensive win shares. You got Mike Conley. You got Corey Joseph. Mm -hmm. You got Jerry and Grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Jerry and Grant. Uh, Russell Westbrook, actually. Eric Bledsoe. Mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry. Even Kyrie Irving, Ricky Rubio, Steph Curry, the Goran Dragic, See, with, Lonzo is like forty-four overall and like probably top twelve. I wouldn't put Kyrie up there, personally. That you know, like I know that's like the actual advanced stats. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put him up there. No, I feel I feel you. you know, I, maybe you know, maybe pushes it, you know, but I don't think his. I think. The way that they have it set up, defensively, his steals are probably the best part of his game. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I think his defense is maybe average, probably pushing above average. Yeah, I think I think you know? I think this year he's like average. This year, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say like he's like a, a like a, like a defensive stopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Like like last night's game against the um, against the Lakers, they were taking him out the game for defensive purposes. Yeah, like there was like switching. Uh-huh. So. Um, no, I agree. That's that's just defensive. That's just the defensive win shares. Yeah. But no, Lonzo will be a, a top five defender in the league. Yeah. That's, oh yeah. And I'm talking about like overall, mm-hmm. like not point guard. He'll be, he'll be a top five defender, defensive mm-hmm. player. I mean, if we're talking point guards and Ben, Simmons, he'll probably he'll probably be, yeah. If we're talking ben, point guards, Ben Simmons. Is ben, probably one. I mean, according to this, Ben Simmons. Where's my boy Fox on there, man? My Russ boy. is number two. Uh, number three is Ricky Rubio, which is surprising. How low do you put De'Aaron Fox? Because De'Aaron Fox be making game with He be making. De'Aaron Fox makes defensive plays. Uh, that's a good question. There's so many players. I mean, sheesh. It's just even wow. Willie is his win shares is two point defensive win shares is two point two. Mm. I mean, that's interesting because I don't really see that. Oh, here we go. I knew once I said that it's it's just game over for Willie and you mainly. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. I mean. He just got three blocks today. Oh, you're going to be very shocked, actually. All right, what's up? 1.1. Willie's? No. Or Fox's? De'Aaron's Fox. Wow. He's down there. He's you, not- see, you see the problem with being a defensive, having a good defensive rating as a point guard? Mm-hmm. There's just too many point guards in the league yeah. to really have a really good defensive rating. And in order to have a really high one, you really just have to be dedicated mm-hmm. to just defense. Oh, yeah. And there's not a lot of point guards that are like that anymore. I mean, I think... I think maybe two. I think it's three. Like Patrick Beverly. Um what's his face? Matthew Delavadova. Delavadova. Neil Aquina. You know, like there's not many defensive that, yeah, point guards. There's not that many. It's just too hard. Way too hard. And even then, like Ben Simmons isn't really even a point guard really. When you well the traditional sense of a point guard, you yeah. don't as as one. I mean, there's Russ, but I mean that man is a freak. Yeah. Literally. It's just crazy to think that the NBA now is just so different. I mean, I I was having a conversation last night with a buddy of mine. He came over. He was editing um, a music video. We were talking about NBA players and the Warriors and all these trades. And, you know, you have guys like, you know, traditional big guys in today's game. Um, and I feel like we could put DeMarcus Cousins in there. I mm-hmm. feel like we could put Hassan Whiteside. Um, Andre Drummond, 
uh, Rudy Gobert, you know, mm-hmm. to name four of them. And those guys would probably excel being in like the past days. Oh you know? yeah. Like we were talking about how how it, or the effect of Shaq in mm-hmm. today's game. What does that have to do with the rules now? Well, Shaq. Well, the thing with Shaq is he was just so big and so dominant. Exactly. That they had players, or like teams, were finding ways to get him out of the paint. Mm-hmm. Even even defensively, just him being there would put a lot of pressure on your offense because mm-hmm. he's down there. So then, so you would see guys like Dirk Nowitzki. Mm-hmm. He's of pulling. Course. He's pulling Shaq out the paint. Yeah. K- Kevin Garnett started yep. playing face up. He's pulling oh, yeah. Shaq out the paint. Dirk, I'm um, a uh, Tim Duncan, another guy. Of course, he, he, I mean, he C Webb. C Webb, that's that's, that's a great, you know. You know these guys. was there. They they started uh, having more players that can shoot from more. At the time, they were no a lot of big guys weren't shooting like threes per se, but more mid range, mid range, further of, out, mm-hmm. like twenty two feet, stuff you like know, that. Nice eighteen footers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so simple. you so so you have more guys like more guys like that. Rasheed Wallace, you know, guys mm-hmm. that can shoot, uh, and they were bringing Shaq out the paint, and so that. It, it's also it, it's effective, and it looks good. So then you have big guys that are like, "I want to shoot too." Yeah. So then you that's when you get the Chris Ops Porzingis, the Porzingis, and you get the the Kevin Durant. You yep. get your, you get your Kevin Durant watching that, seeing that a big guy can shoot that far, and then you get your Kevin Durant that are looking at Tracy McGrady ball out, oh, watching easily. Kobe, and then you get you get you get a KD playing in his backyard, and he's like, "I can do this actually." Yeah, but then like really think about that if. If we put Shaq into this era now, what would he look like? Well, that's how would he a, play? That's, that's it. I you always know? try. I always try to figure that out because the rules are not made for him. Uh, actually, I, I I was actually the other day I was looking at the rule book, like the actual physical rule book, and I was like kind of reviewing mm-hmm. it here and there. And I think what Shaq would be doing is actually start training mm-hmm. because eighty-two games is a ton mm-hmm. of games. You know, yeah. you have. What is that? Season about preseason, including? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. about what eight months? You would say it's a long, nine months yeah. if you go into the finals or so. Yeah, yeah. It's a long or the final. playoffs at least. Shaq would kill it. You know, I w- I want to say Shaq would kill it too, but I just feel like I just feel like it's just so hard for bigs to dominate on in on this end. See, but but check this out. You have a guy like Shaq. He came he came in from LSU. Um, and went to the Magic. He was already dominant as hell. He was, I guarantee you, one of the strongest people coming out of the draft in history. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, he's, what, seven footer, if I remember? Mm-hmm. Seven foot, came into the league about 250, 260. Mm-hmm. And a guy that strong at only 250, 260, and he was lean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ability to, you know, be athletic, the ability to shoot, you know, to kind of shoot here and there, you know, that's that's still nice. But he could still get bullied. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He would be at the line way more. He would get so many M1 plays more than he would get it, you know? Oh, yeah. See, see the thing is, Shaq was, like, drafted in 2018, 2019. Oh, my God. You're not you're not seeing, like, the, the out-of-shape Shaq you saw at the end of the Lakers series. No, hell end no. End of the Lakers year. No. Shaq is, Shaq is going to be chiseled oh, his whole entire career. Easily. So, I would I actually love to see that. And now my thinking is... I I guess I am agreeing with you because mm-hmm. if Giannis can dominate like Giannis does, mm-hmm. Shaq can dominate. Because in my mindset, I'm thinking, you know, you know, it's just it's just it'll be they would just call they would call offensive fouls on him all the time. They just exactly. kick attack stuff. But no, Shaq is going to just bully everyone down low. And tell you the truth, they, we probably need a Shaq nowadays. Honestly, we need a Shaq because we- everyone is just shooting from three now. Mm-hmm. There needs to be a guy down low that's just a low post guy that makes it cool for other people mm-hmm. to learn how to play in the low post. There's, oh, hell yeah. Because there's not enough nuance in the game. You mm-hmm. either pick and roll, kick out, or lay it up for a dunk. Uh-huh. And I feel like it would be, it would be really, it really would be great if Shaq, a Shaq would bring, pour, come back because people, NBA, the NBA is just a copycat league. They always say that, but it's true. Yeah. Like people just, people were doing certain things and then mm-hmm. they saw, the Warriors, now everybody wants to shoot threes and this and that, and everybody wants to play fast. There's just not, like, there's not 
the, even the, the Spurs, the, the team that played at their own pace, mm-hmm. they play fast now. Oh, hell yeah. The Memphis Grizzlies aren't grit and grind anymore. Nope. They're they're playing fast. Somewhat. As fast as they can. Uh, they got rid of Marcus Saul, so I guess they can move a little faster now. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I, I, I like that. I would love a, a Shaq. I mean, the closest thing we have to Shaq is, I think, Boogie. Yeah. I think that's the closest thing we got. Boogie Cousins. I mean, look at him. He just came back from his injury. Mm-hmm. He's already killing it. Yeah. For a minute restriction guy. Mm-hmm. What is he? I think he's topped out at like around 18, 20 or so. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, looking at his numbers tonight, he he played really well. Yeah, um, yeah. Where is it? Let me find it. I would I would say I would like I like that comparison. Mm-hmm. I like Giannis more because Giannis is actually preparing propelling his team to win. That's true, but we're if we're just talking about a guy like Shaq, then we have to put him to Marcus Cousins. Oh well, yeah, he could be in there, but yeah. if you're talking about just pure dominance, oh, then pure dominance. But like with Giannis, is a different story. I know he's a different, he's a different I, story, and he's a different like he's a different build. But the things that he's doing this year is yeah. incredible. Oh, I mean, to a kid from Greek or from Greece to be able to come in at six or six seven. I'm sorry, actually. Cause I remember when he got picked up, I was like, "Why was he drafted at such a high, you know, a high spot?" I think he was like back in two thousand and yeah, I think it'd be like thirteen. It had to be thirteen. Two thirteen. Yeah, right around that era, two thousand twelve maybe somewhere. Um, but a guy like that to come in at nineteen years old at six seven, out the gates he's starting. No, Giannis. You know, yeah. Giannis was, didn't come in at six seven. That fool came in like six nine. No, he came in at six seven. He came in at six seven because I was wondering. I looked up a ton of stuff, and you know, he comes in at six seven, nineteen years old. Okay, cool. Plays about I think twenty twenty five minutes a game. You know, had awful stats. Mm-hmm. A couple boards, a couple points. You know, couldn't still couldn't shoot. You know, but he's a rookie. Whatever. Um, later on in the season goes six eight six nine, um, so on and so forth, and he slowly grew as a player, you know. But nobody knew about it. Goes into his third year, he's six ten, and this kid, he's not a kid really. I mean, he's, I think we're the same age, we're around the same age. It's like a year younger than me, but he's dominating. On his third year, for a guy that should have, should not have been in the top ten, but he, grew, in my opinion, mm-hmm. or a top fifteen lottery picks player, but he grew into that, which was great. And then he had Jason Kidd, you know, teach him mm-hmm. Hall of Fame great. So I mean, yeah, you could put him in there, but I don't know. I mean, you're all right. I mean, he is dominating. He's damn near one of the MVP players of the year. Um, you have Harden, you have Giannis, you have PG, Steph. At the probably very end of the barrel, you have, man, KD. Um, the list goes on and on. Kawhi. So, I get what you mean, though. Yeah, I just I just think that, uh, that yeah, I just, I just feel like it just, from a pure dominant stand, I would go to him. Mm-hmm. Boogie, yeah, especially when Boogie was rolling, and then uh, he um, and he was when he was on, when he's when Boogie was on fire and his mind's in the right moment. Mm-hmm. There's nobody stopping him. Oh hell no! It was yeah, it, it pretty much uh, was what you would expect from like Shaq in that when Shaq was in the zone. Yep. So I could, I could definitely see that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just the only negative side is you see a, a guy like Andre Drummond that's only reduced to being. A rim running rebounder, so that's the only thing I would want Shaq to become. But the type of competitor that Shaq would be is, and he would just try to kill somebody every night. I mean, that's what Giannis is doing. Yeah, I'm surprised he doesn't have any more te- or any texts at all for just like staring because <laughs> this guy is huge. Yeah. He's dunking on everybody. He's well, I have to put in that he does travel a lot. <laughs> but They don't call travel in the NBA. I know, they, don't, they really don't. But he's literally taking like four or five dribbles. I've never seen him go coast to coast with anything, 
you know, more than six. Mm. And for a guy that size to have the ability to go coast to coast in six, seven seconds, maybe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in literally eight or five dribbles, yeah. usually, it's insane. He could play po He could play big. He could post up and get you buckets, blocks, steals, assists, everything. Yeah. The only thing he can do is shoot from the outside, but it's okay, especially yes, if you're, you know, you have guys like who they pick up, or they have Ursan Ilyasova, and then they picked up Ryan Anderson. No, they 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 have Brook Lopez as their center. Yeah. And they just traded for uh, Nikola Meritic. Even better. So they have Are you me? they have a lot of, and then they have Chris Middleton can shoot. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chris Middleton. So just uh, so imagine this: you put Giannis at small forward. You got Chris Middleton at the two. Mm -hmm. You got Nicola Meritus at the at the four. And yep. you got Brooke Lopez at the five. And then you have, have, have Brogdon. Not, yeah, Brogdon or Eric Bledsoe at the point. Either or. I mean, you and have, so all four of those guys are on the three point line. It's insane. You can't you can't stop that. You and, literally can't. And you what you say double Giannis. All right, wide open three. Yeah. Or you say go go one on one with Giannis. Okay. Oh, that's easy. A foul and he makes the basket. And one easily. I mean, you have to be a great defender and know how to position yourself. So that's what we're talking. So that's, 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 that's I mean, like that's it's a it's gonna be a bloodbath. And the first time in a long time, the Eastern Conference is the premier bloodbath of the two conferences. Oh hell yeah! I mean, uh, hell yeah! I think I think the West is gonna be exciting too, because mm -hmm. like, I mean, the Warriors, Lakers probably will be a first round unless the Kings have have a say in that. Yep. Um, you got the Nuggets squaring mm -hmm. off with you know. The Jazz or the or the Spurs, how they fall. There's there's just a lot of there's a lot of ways that this NBA season could turn out. So I'm I'm I, I'm 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 excited for the regular season to end. You know, maybe the Kings squeeze in there. Uh -huh. Lakers take the. Uh, you know, it's it's there's still chances for teams to play, and yeah, I just feel like, especially in that that second, the second round in the in the East. When those those juggernaut teams are playing each other, yeah, that's gonna be insane. When the mat, when the 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 Bucks and the the Seven Sixers are squaring off, or the Raptors and the the Celtics are squaring off, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure how how it breaks down right now. And then, guaranteed, is gonna be some matchup between like the the Bucks, Seventy Sixers, Raptors, and Celtics in the in the conference finals. Mm -hmm. And one of those teams actually, to me, has a legit chance of competing against the Warriors. Yeah, that's like that's the first. That's a, it's been a long time since we've actually had a competitive finals. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been three years. Yeah, and, and, and that one that finals was only competitive because they suspended Draymond Green. Oh yeah. So and that was a questionable. Suspension. That was a, yeah. He Very. probably he probably even shouldn't have been suspended. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like. I'm excited for it to be, there's, there's going to be a competitive finals. I can't wait for it. And then even in the West, like OKC is going to be a threat. Mm -hmm. Paul George is playing out of his mind right now. Mm -hmm. Paul George, Russell Westbrook, all the boys they got, they got Dennis Smith. I mean, not Dennis Smith. Oh, I'm crazy. You're crazy. Uh, <laughs> Dennis Schrodinger. They got Schrodinger. Oh. They got Schro Dennis Schroeder. They got Schro. Um, they just got a bench. Steve, don't forget about Steven Adams. They got Ferguson, mm -hmm. Czech Diallo. They just got a lot going on. I think they picked. Oh, they didn't. They didn't. But they got. They. I think they. They're gonna do some. Them some free agent searching. So like, I can't wait for that. And then you have. You know, for me, like it's really, the, the Warriors and the OKC are pretty much what you're looking at right now. Really, you wouldn't put. How especially how the Nuggets are playing, you wouldn't put them up there. Don't trust them. Okay. I, I mean, is it because they're not experienced enough, or is yeah. it because they're not a good enough team? Combination of both. Okay, that's fair. I mean, you have, I you know this since we play since we started playing uh, fantasy together a mm -hmm. few years back. I was on the Jokic boat since he got drafted and came into the league. Mm -hmm. You know that mm -hmm. I picked him up, and you guys were like, "Why did you pick him up?" And I'm like. He's going to be good. You guys just don't see it. He's literally going to be the next. In my head, I was saying that he's going to be a better version and a version 2.0 of Marcus All. Mm -hmm. And he really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that boy can shoot, defend decently for, you know, for doing all that much. You know, he's a passer, a shooter, defensive. You know, he helps defense. He's a smart 
player. Mm -hmm. You have Jamal Murray, um, who is possibly probably their best shooter in on the team. You know, or one of them at least. You know, I mean, he's a very streaky shooter. Yeah. But you know, he plays tough. He plays hard. Mm -hmm. Um, who else do they have? I mean, they have Paul Millsap, a yeah. guy that is going to lead you somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Gary Harris, who's you know finally coming into his own, finally you know yeah. shooting here and there, solid guy. Um, Mason Plumley coming off the bench. You have Trey Lyles that helps out a lot. You know, just enough. Um, Tory Craig, which is a very big shock. He mm -hmm. came out of nowhere, Malik Beasley. See, I, 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 I like, I, I kind of like Nuggets. I really like, I love Jokic. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, he, he kind of fades in games too much. Mm. And you know, and then I don't trust uh, Murray. I feel like he, like you said, he's streaky. I feel like mm -hmm. he's too streaky at times. Yeah. He can drop forty-seven on you, or he can be like drop fifteen points on yeah. seven of twenty-seven shooting. Uh huh. Uh, haven't seen too much of Harris to really trust him this year. Yeah, Millsap is Millsap. He gets injured too often for me. That's fair. I can see him getting hurt and being that missing the playoffs. Uh huh. So then it's just like they just to me. That's just I got to see him in the playoffs and see how they perform. I mean, they're playing against some really good teams. The Rockets, they Rockets, they won one thirty six to one twenty two. It's, I, it's the know. regular season though. I mean, they've, the, never been the, the, they've never been the playoffs. But they're playing against you know top teams but they've never been the playoffs they've never played it yeah they're they're ne they've never played a team where they they're scouting mm -hmm. where teams are trying to take things away from them yeah where teams are forcing guys to be playmakers or yeah. for their, they got i gotta wait and see because okay. they, they, they they're gonna i don't know i have to wait and see no fair enough i mean i i go by you know just because i feel like the nuggets are the Western Conference Pacers, if you mm. really think about that. Before the Victor Oladipo um, season end, ending injury, they're literally the the West Western Conference version of the Pacers. Probably a little better, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, they have a little bit more seasoned guys. They're their guys um, on the Nuggets. It's, they have a playoff, you know, a guy in Paul Millsap that has a playoff experience. You have a better, you know, overall center mm -hmm. couple you have a couple shooters here and there and a couple of defensive stoppers i mean no knock on the pacers i think they're gonna they have a good chance to round out the east you know i mean they're still third which is insane yeah they still have bogdanovich they still have darren carlson tyreek evans aaron holiday who should have should be playing a lot more now um they have veteran guys, Corey Joseph, Kyle, Kyle Quinn. Um, you have, you know, Thaddeus Young. Uh, under Probably, in my opinion, one of the most underrated power forwards we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think if you have good team chemistry and you all are, like, in it, then I think they, they could, you know, give, give the Warriors or whoever – you know they're playing against a run for the money, but it just depends on the situation. You yeah. know, are they closing out? Or are they gonna play? You know, perfect bas, almost perfect basketball every time, and that's the problem. That's the only problem I see with them. They're not talking to each other. They're not, you know, they're not doing the things that they would do against teams like the Sixers when they went against them. The teams like Rockets, you know. I just think we have to wait and see. Okay, I, I think I think yeah, it's good that they got the they were they held down the first seed for so long and mm -hmm. they're they're holding down the second seed. Mm -hmm. But let's just wait and see. Let's okay. see what, I, I gotta see. I gotta see. Okay. Fair uh, until then, I gotta go with the incumbent. Fair enough. Or is that, that's the right word. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go. With, so. I gotta go. With, yeah. yeah, yeah uh, hey, science. I'm not in college anymore. Yeah, I graduated. Political, politi political science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Uh, <laughs> shout, shout out to political science. Yeah, uh, never that, paid attention to that class. Yeah, um, I almost failed by like I passed by like seven, seven points. So straight up general ed, man. General, I, I hate that. So in California. So yeah, so I I got I'm going I'm just, I'm gonna stick with the field over the Nuggets. Okay, fair I, enough. I feel like in the playoffs I trust the the Thunder more and mm -hmm. the Rockets more. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean you have two MVPs, mm -hmm. James Harden. And Russ, you have Paul George on the Thunder, which is he is playing at an MVP level and he can take it. Yeah. And then you have, you know, guys like CP3 who can help you out. You have 
uh, what's his face? Oh, uh, tall Swiss Swiss Alps. Uh, Clint Capella, mm-hmm. the Rockets. You know, gives you an amazing defensive presence. And then on the other side with Thunder, Stephen Adams, the nicest person probably in the NBA, and probably the, maybe the strongest person in the NBA. Probably, yeah. yeah I mean, you're right. so I don't blame you for you know picking those two over, you know, the Nuggets, the Clippers, all of them. But I think. Like I said, I think the the Nuggets have a good chance over like a Rockets team. Yeah, you know, uh, we'll we'll see, we'll see. Cause mm-hmm. like I remember there's a game like in January. January, it was, huh? It was January, 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 <laughs> January or December. There was a game in January, or December. How'd you get January? Oh come on, bro. <laughs> January, December. The the Warriors played the Nuggets, mm-hmm. and the Warriors were like, "All right, I got the first. You guys, you guys, you guys are the first seed." We'll be, all right, let's see. <laughs> and the Warriors said, "We're gonna we're, we're gonna play, and we're gonna play you and show you what the real first seed was." Mm-hmm. And the Warriors dogged the, the Nuggets. Yeah, dogged them, and it was nobody went off. Fair enough. It's just that the Warriors just flexed their muscle and said, "We're the better team." Boogie isn't even healthy yet, but we'll just play you guys straight up. Mm-hmm. So after I saw that, I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I think the Nuggets are pretenders. They're not contenders. Mm. I think they're pretenders, man." That I- was that was a statement game. That's true. I mean, I think, I think you got to give them, give them some time. Um, once, once it hits, you know, the end of this year, I think next year they'll they'll be a solid contender, very solid contender. I mean, you pick up another piece or two, maybe you pick up, um, I don't know. I mean, a guy like Wes Matthews, I know he's probably gonna go to the Pacers. Pacers really want him on there, you know, some veteran presence. Um, Corey Brewer, once he's done with the ten day, I think in the ja- as a Jazz, if I remember correctly, you know, go to the Nuggets. He's know. on the he's on the Kings. He on the, is he really? Yeah, he's on then the. Why Kings. didn't he play tonight? Or is it just brand new already? Yeah, Wait, too new. I think I don't know, but yeah, he's on the Kings right yeah. now. Yeah, but either way, I mean, I think give it a year and then we kind of go back to this because it's gonna be. An insane top heavy year for next season. Yeah, I mean they probably should just end up taking the sec- the best sixteen teams instead of having the conference. We're not talking about this. this they, need, a, they need. We've to been have, talking. Of, you and I discussed this already. They just need to have the best sixteen teams. I mean, everybody in the NBA, all the reporters have done the exact same thing. They're not going to do it. Not yet, anyway, because it doesn't make any sense right now. I well, mean, yeah, it makes, makes so much plenty sense. of sense. Well, it makes sense to everybody, but they're not gonna do it because you know they're sticking to the old rules, and you know it's gonna be it's gonna take time. It's yeah. just like saying if we're gonna have the Supersonics back in the, you know. I that's... just think I think the only negative side about having sixteen teams is that the travel time because you would have like say you had. Like the 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 Portland, say you had like the Trailblazers against the, say, the Raptors in the first okay. round. That's too much travel time. Not really. That's a lot of travel. That's not that bad. That's six hours. That's six hours there, six hours back. If you include the the time difference, that's a total of nine hours. That's not bad. And plus, if the NBA was smart, and you know the commissioner Adam Silver, probably. Possibly the best commissioner, um, or a top five commissioner in the NBA since the NBA ABA merger. I mean, he's gonna be smart. He's gonna give the team time to rest and talk with like the NBA, NB, NP, national best NPBA. Mm-hmm. You know, one of those. <laughs> oh, N NBPA. There it is. But they're going to, you know, talk about it. They're going to give them time, and they're going to discuss, like, hey, we're doing this. We're going to need an extra day. That's fine. Because then you're generating so much money. Then you're doing this, and you're doing that, and you're giving guys time to rest and get rid of that jet lag. And Well, you practice. can't really have rest because it's, it's like the playoffs. I don't know. It's like 2-2, two, 1-1-1. Two, one, one, one. Is it? Yes, yeah, two, yeah, two, yeah, two, two, one, one, one. So, but you're saying you would, you would fly to? But look, but look how we're doing it. You know, if we're if we're going to do it for the first sixteen, because there's 
16 teams, right? There's yeah. eight games every single day or four games every day. Four, you know, I think one through 116, um, you know, 116 and like, you know, a couple guys in the middle, mm-hmm. you know, two top and two lower teams or to mid-level playoff games, I guess, in uh, this case. Yeah. You know? Um, so like... Number one and number sixteen, number two and number fifteen, and then you'd have like, um, I think it's like four and like, what was that nine or whatever that is? You know. I'm kind of lost, but yeah. So basically, you're you're gonna split the the difference. You're gonna have those like four games. Yeah, they're gonna take the most time because they have, um, the travel times. You know, especially if they go past game five. Yeah, but that's the thing though. They, they, you don't want to draw the play. I feel like if you do it that way, you're gonna draw the playoffs. Like if you give players more time in between games, you're just gonna bring the playoffs. Well, it just depends on like the the distance. Like it's like saying if you're gonna have the Lakers versus the Raptors, you know, say if pretending that the Lakers would be 16, pretending that the Raptors would be number one overall. Mm -hmm. Like that's a different story. You know, having say like the Magic versus the Blazers, that's another story. You know, it's like you have to give that time. LA is like a four-hour flight or something like that. To to Toronto. Four. (laughs) What? Oh, I don't know. That's like a, a nine, eight hour flight, seven hour flight, I think. Because how long did it take from us to go? It took us five hours to go from San Francisco to Chicago, give or take, six hours. Maybe a little less, a little more. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but but you would have to, you really just, you know, that's the only issue that I see. Yeah, I. but I mean, I guess it makes sense, but they just need they need to figure it out. Yeah, it won't it won't happen anytime soon. Because there's no reason why like there's all these teams that are like around 500 in the West uh-huh. not make the playoffs, and then you got like the Heat that are like three games under 500, and mm-hmm. they're like in the sixth seed. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But oh wait, they're eighth. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, they're well tonight they're eighth. <laughs> they dropped from seventh to eighth. Yeah. Crazy. And I'm only saying that because this is one of the first time the Kings might finish it with a winning record, and I don't want them to miss the playoffs with a winning record. I mean, so the fight for the bottom of the the t- last the two, three spots. It's really, it, I mean, like the 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 the, 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 the Jazz could fall; they could fall off. They're not that even the Blazers. Honestly, yeah. I mean, the after four, five, six, seven, and eight, those five spots are up for grabs. Yeah, the Rockets. I say the Rockets. Uh, Rockets are safe because James Harden just yeah. he's, he's playing hot right now. Chris Paul's yeah. really just helping out too. Right but now. like, yeah, if you really look at it, like, I mean, you know, like, I of course we're gonna put Golden State, the, the Nuggets. Nuggets, and the OKC. You know, we're gonna put them top three for sure. Yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, I think they those stay. I mean, I think. The Blazers can drop to six at most, yeah. maybe push it seven, but that's doing a lot. I think Sacramento can't, has a chance to be in it after the Clippers lose Boban and they lose um, Tobias Harris, which is a all-star snub, yeah, yeah, yeah. huge all-star snub, ever, almost, I mean, for the past two or three years. Spurs, I mean, the Spurs, you... No, I can see the Spurs. Yeah, I can see out. the Spurs. You know, it's they're only like what are they got? They got. Uh, they're in there. I mean, they're only. That's they're like uh, two games uh, above. Three and a half game. Wait, I can't even see that. Yeah, right. they're only two games ahead of the Kings, which is. Yeah, so you know, I, so I can I can see the Spurs falling off. I can see the Kings getting hot and just going to tear, and I can see them not going to tear. But no, yeah, but you know they because they. It just dep- I just have to see. Like it just depends on how fast they acclimate uh, Alec Burke and Harrison Barnes. Yeah. I can still see the guys don't really know how to use them because mm-hmm. they're they they haven't had they don't have, they ne- they have they have not had a player like Alec Burke that can slash the basket. I mean, we saw that all night. They, uh, we you were you were pretty pretty um, up on him. Yeah. I was super up on him. Like I think the issue with Shump was he's a great person inside the locker room. On the out, you know, on the court, it's a different story. He's a very hit or miss player. Well, he he started off the first few months of the season really hot, and he just slowly kind of regressed to the mean. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's you know, I I'm not. I, it is it is what it is. He it was, is he was just in a, he was in a little bit of a slump for the past month and a half. But you know, Alec Burke was just attacking the basket. We haven't had a player that really has done that in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and just having a small forward that can d up. You saw at the end of the game where, like. 
where Harrison Barnes just went, mm. you know, got in that defensive stance and, yeah, and just, got it. it was locked up way. That, yeah, that, that was I think, beautiful. I think that one specific turnover that mm-hmm. Barnes kind of just pressured way too much to where he just over dribbled. That was the game changer. So like it's just funny because it's just the, for the Kings and the Lakers, it's how far, it's how fast. Because the Lakers, they're gonna have to get their chemistry back, mm-hmm. and the Kings are gonna have to refine their chemistry. Mm-hmm. I, f- I figure whichever team rediscovers their chemistry is gonna be the first one. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, and because they're they're all hoping, and everybody, I think it's logical to think that the the, the Clippers will fall off. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, if we're relooking at it again, you have the Lakers, the Kings, the Clips. Spurs and the Jazz. Those, those are all. Those the are teams. all the. They're teams. fighting for those, those two, those last spots. The, the two teams I would probably kick out would be maybe the Jazz and the Clips. Yeah. No offense to the Jazz or any Jazz fans, or any you know Clippers fans. They just didn't make them. They, they, you know? they both didn't make moves to win. I think the Clippers won and up. They not. They don't want to make the playoffs. Well, they don't want to make the playoffs because if they make the playoffs. They lose out on their pick and yeah. they send it over to the Celtics, if I remember correctly. It's just like, yeah, it's just like, and why would you want to? Well, who wants a, who really wants a first round exit? I mean, nobody ever wants a first round. Re- the exit. only a first round exit. The only people that want a first round exit if you're, if you're a young team yep. and making the playoffs is uh-huh. an accomplishment. If the Kings make a make the make it to the playoffs and they make they get swept in all four games or two out of four, mm-hmm. or are they just competitive yep. in their games? Yep. That's a win. Yeah, definitely. LeBron needs to make that AFC because he's LeBron. Of course. That's it. And if he doesn't, that's a very sh- big shocker. That's a, yeah. That's a, that's like oh snap. Yeah. And then because you if, and then uh, the Spurs. The Spurs. You know you got to make the playoffs because you're the Spurs. Yeah. You, you can't break that record of not making the playoffs. And I mean the Jazz. The Jazz. If it's just a failure to the season, but it's not really. I mean they d- don't get me wrong. Donovan Mitchell's not playing as well as he should. Mm-hmm. Joe Ingles is. Still lighting it up, but I mean, you have Ricky Rubio, who's, Ricky Rubio is playing great. To Rudy Gobert is Defensive Player of the Year. Like I can, I think know? it's a failure, and I say that because you align failure with expectations. That's fair. Okay, if you're talking about it like that, then yeah. To me, like if you are expecting, yeah, after what the the Jazz did last year, they knocked out the, the Thunder in the first round. And they scared the Houston Rockets in the second round. Uh-huh. I guarantee you that their fans, they probably won't say it, but their fans were probably expecting them to be a top four seed this year. Mm. At least a top five seed. You know, they're yeah. expecting them to be up there. And I think, no, top four. I think they were expecting them to be a top four seed. Nobody saw the Nuggets doing this. I think they thought they would be a top four seed this year. Nuggets? Nobody saw the Nuggets being it. Well, numbered. nobody ever saw the Nuggets being in the playoffs this early. With in no, their, they 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 were this early yes. into their young like yes. careers. Yeah, you can. I, I'm on wax saying that they they probably should have made it onto the playoffs last year. Okay, like you you go back to the early episodes. Carl and I talked about it. They uh-huh. should have made the playoffs last year, but Paul Millsap was dead for like 30 games or something. Yeah. So I saw them making the playoffs. I just didn't see them being this high in the playoffs. Yeah, so nobody true. saw that. And truthfully, the teams I saw that was going to be a top four, I thought it was going to be Warriors, mm-hmm. OKC, yep. Rockets, and the Jazz. I felt like the, the, the Trailblazers would fall off. I didn't think LeBron had enough to be a top four seed. They were a top four seed when he was healthy. Mm-hmm. I thought he'd be somewhere about six, five, five or six. But now they're 10th and out the playoffs. Right uh, yeah, I thought the, the Trailblazers were going to fall off mm-hmm. just because I thought in the Pelicans, I thought the Pelicans were going to be in there somewhere. But, Pelicans should have been in there. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. They yeah. they kind of screw over them, so I was fine. Yeah, that one is just a very big shocker. I mean, even even the Grizzlies at one point were the number one conference seat. playoff yeah, team, they which was weird. Seat. But shoot, so it's all right, about eleven o'clock. We gotta go eat. Yeah, this, I'm kind of hungry right now. Yeah. So we're going to close it out right now. Sorry about that. It's all basketball talk right now. We just left the game, so that's pretty much why it is like that. Yes, sir. So you got any last words? I mean, man, next time we'll... I mean, we've been trying to talk about this health, personal health stuff. You know me. I mean, I'm going to be going into personal training, and we trying to, you know, not just help each other, but I think we should help everyone else kind of go through because you started a keto diet ketogenic for Mm -hmm. most people that don't know and you know some of your friends and a lot of my friends are you know kind of got onto it so i mean i guess next time i'm on here here, we talk about health all right yeah that sounds good to me so 
if you guys thought anything we said was not smart, that's because we're uneducated. And if you thought we're not qualified we're to say anything that, that we said on there, it's because we're unqualified. Definitely unqualified. That makes us unqualified and uneducated. Thanks for tuning in for the episode. As always, stay unqualified, live uneducated. Yeet!